everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News and a great episode of that. All of today's stories will be marked down below, guys. Let's hop right into our first story, though. The last time we'll probably be talking about Team Immortals for quite some time as they do have officially their finalized roster for the remainder of ESO Pro League season. Now, many of you guys are aware of the situation going on in Team Immortals right now. They've also withdrawn from several tournaments so far, the Epicenter being one of them. And alongside that, we can expect we're not going to be seeing them in many tournaments going forward unless they do manage to qualify for them. So thanks to Joe Cardali on Twitter, their official roster will, of course, be Steel and Bolts. Alongside that, two former Luminosity Gaming members, SHZ and Destiny. And then, of course, it will be Horby to acquire his visa issues. Once he actually figures out those visa issues and acquires his P1 Athletic Visa, it will be Horby standing in for their fifth member there for the new Immortals roster, guys. Until he actually can figure those things out, though, it's taken him quite some time, I believe over a month since he's actually tried to acquire that P1 visa. It will actually be their current coach, Zach, standing in for the roster, and that will be Immortals five man roster. Steel and Bolts, of course, already there. SHZ and Destiny from LG. And alongside that, Horby or Zach will fill in to be their full roster. Now, I really can't expect too much out of them in the future. They've already withdrawn from several tournaments. So throughout 2017, the remainder of the year, we probably won't see them in too much. They've already backed out of Epicenter, other tournaments as well. So unless they're invited or managed to qualify, we probably won't see them in too many tournaments. Maybe ESL Pro League, though, the finals there, if they do manage to qualify. Of course, that former roster, though, did not leave these guys in too good of a standing. As of right now, they are currently 3-4 and four and currently 10th place in the ESL Pro League standings. They do have a chance to qualify still, but making that top 8 or that top 6 is definitely going to be a struggle with this brand new roster for them. These guys have played together in pairs in the past, but definitely going to be a team issue there if they can manage to qualify. It'd be nice to see them and see how they do uh, with this kind of roster setup as well. Now, on top of that, bouncing off that, guys, some more Chinese CSGO news. I know a lot of you get irritated with me saying this, but Perfect World has been doing some things perfectly compared to Valve. And this is another thing. We actually had this guy tweet out this. Apparently, Chinese content creators and well-known people in the Chinese CSGO scene are being sent gifts by Perfect World. We don't ever see this by CSGO devs or Valve devs ever doing this as well. They've actually been sending out gifts to other content creators in the Chinese scene who are well known in the scene and the first gift they sent out was actually a miniature op. That is um, amazing to see this great thing to actually connect to the community and of course when these content creators get these gifts they're going to tweet them out and they really are cool. Of course it is a very very small op but Valve does not do these kind of things. Although it might be a small gift to some of you it's it's cool to see that Perfect World is thinking of things that Valve has never thought of or never actually done itself. On top of this though guys the main story for today we do have Ghost Gaming a team who is currently in ESL Pro League. They actually one of their members returned to their roster and that roster has had several internal issues. Wardell is the man who actually went left Rogue Gaming, Hiko's team to actually return to this roster, guys, and they've now been accused of wall hacking or cheating in the game of CSGO, and I want to show you guys some clips and some tweets. Now, this actually might be a false accusation, of course. It might actually be a joke as well. We had Fur tweet out this, though, and I want to translate that for you guys on screen. It does actually say, in this Tempo Storm game, there are people with wall hacks, and it's not just a few. So, we also went on, I'm going to show you guys some clips of this game of Ghost Gaming versus Tempo Storm, and there were some amazing flicks, some very sketchy plays as well. You guys noticed Wardell and Ricks from that roster of Ghost Gaming. We're doing some very sketchy things. I want you guys to all comment down below. What do you guys think? Do I think they were wall, ha wall hacking or cheating? I really can't tell you guys, although if Dan M was watching this footage, he might actually think that and might actually make it look more appealing to you guys to say that they are cheating. I'm going to show you guys those clips right now, though, and here's the sketchy gameplay by Ghost Gaming. Also, on top of that, guys, we had Fur, also Tempo Storm players, and on top of that, many analysts and the actual casters calling Ghost Gaming out for cheating, and so we'll see what you guys think about these clips. <laughs> oh, I know Burku. Yeah, boy. <laughs> oh, vai dar o burco. Tá no flanco monstro aí, velho. Mas o Ardel tá mais rato que. Os caras estão oh. falando do. Ah! Tá chitado! Tá chitado! Tá chitado! Esse aí não me engana, não, rapaz. Olha ele. Tô falando com o Tobo? Ó! Ah, tem duas três fadas. Ah, mano. Acho que eles foram uns três juntos. Mas você acha que, que, que eles atualizaram a. Que isso, Rick? Você tá Mas você acha que eles, que eles atualizaram a. Que isso, Rick? Você tá Tu mesmo, Chutar, você acha? And in a very brief story, not necessarily CSGO related, I really want to quickly talk about Shroud. Many of you guys know former Cloud9 Shroud left just about a month and a half ago. And in that month and a half, this guy has done things that pretty much no one else can ever say ever say they've ever done. And this is actually when it comes to his Twitch streams. Many of you guys know he has slowly become in the past 45 days the single most popular PUBG streamer. Every time he streams, he averages at least 30,000 viewers. And he is actually now the number one most watched trip streamer, Twitch streamer most of the times he actually does stream, which is insane to say this guy in the, in the span of a month and a half 
half, has accumulated over 1 million followers. I think it's like 1.3 million followers. He is now one of the top 10. Actually, he's uh, currently number 12 of the most followers on Twitch. You take away big accounts still like ESL and Riot, he's actually a top 10 Twitch streamer when it comes to followers. In the span, he's actually you know accumulated several hundred thousand followers in that month and a half as well. He should soon be probably approaching top five as well. On top of that, though, when it comes to actual viewership numbers, he's always in the top five. On top of that, though, his numbers are insane. When it comes to most subscribed people on Twitch, he is now nearing 35,000. At the point of me recording this, guys, he's just short of 35,000 subscribers on Twitch, and that does equate to, on average, right around, of course, over $70,000 per month, not including donations. It's just insane to see the growth this guy has had, and of course, single-handedly probably carrying that game of PUBG to it, the popularity it has been. Of course, there's many other streamers out there who have equal number of viewers, and when it comes to PUBG in general, when we're talking about CSGO dying, no, CSGO is not necessarily dying, but PUBG is taking off like no other game we've ever seen today. When it comes to viewership, this game is always number one, always by far and away the number one most watched game. Unless other games out there have big tournaments going on, it is always going to be PUBG and has been like this for the past month or so, and Shroud has been a huge part of that, and so it's crazy to see. I almost want to say thank you or congratulations. This guy looks so much happier, and it's really cool to see a former CSGO pro sticking away, away from the scene, but all the loyal viewers from CSGO are still watching him, and he's doing an amazing job. He is now making probably more money than he ever could play in CSGO, having more fun, having more freedom, and I wanted to include that in today's episode to show you guys, and I'm sure many of you guys were aware of this, his growth has been insane away from the CSGO scene, and so I really want to know what you guys think about this. This guy, in the span of 45 days, has done all these requirements, all these achievements, and, and seemingly no time at all, so what the future lies for this guy, no one really knows, but it really kind of solidifies in my mind, will he ever come back to CSGO as a pro player? Most likely not. He has no need to monetarily. No no need to when it comes to he has way more fun not playing CSGO. And so those are my overall thoughts and opinions. But what Shroud has done in the past month and a half, no one can deny it, is amazing. And very last in today's episode of CSGO News, guys, I do want to talk about Despy on screen for all of you who was actually banned by ESL, actually kind of vac banned by ESL uh, about a week ago from today. He actually was reverted, though. That ban has now been lifted because apparently ESL found no evidence that he was cheating. He's obviously a current player for Space Soldiers. Space Soldiers, the organization, continued to actually refute this case and say it was was a false accusation. ESL went ahead and banned this guy without really looking into detail and then finally ESL had their post just yesterday. They have lifted his ban. He has now been unbanned permanently guys as they looked into it intensively and found no evidence whatsoever. So it kind of leaves me uh, you know a little bit on the fence here what, what I really think about ESL banning these guys. Of course we have many people false banned out there of course that don't have the popularity of being a pro player. So how many players out there are being falsely accused of being uh, you know, of cheating or maybe falsely banned and of course they don't have the right for ESL to look into their case intensively and unban them. It makes me feel kind of kind of weird the fact that ESL threw out this ban there and of course Valve went along with it without even looking into the case intensively. I feel bad for all those people out there who have been banned by ESL, by Valve and have their cases not looked at like this because they're not a pro player. Those are my overall thoughts and opinions though. Congratulations to Despy. His ban has now been lifted. He was actually going to be one of the first people in a long time in the, in the top tier pro scene if you want to call Space, Space Soldiers a top tier team to actually be VAC banned but that ban has been lifted. So hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. If you guys did, please do me a favor and leave a comment down below. I will see you guys all hope in a couple days with some more news. As always, hope you guys all enjoy. My name is Jake Moore. I like you. Here comes a yelling outro because you guys want a yelling outro. By the way, one more tip as well. I will be doing a stream this Friday, World War II, Call of Duty Beta on the PC does come out. It'll be a drinking stream. I'll probably be waxing my thighs finally for you guys. That sounds so weird. Okay, yelling outro. Here it comes. Hope you all enjoy. <laughs> And going for it, the defuse is already happening. Are you kidding me? He's gonna go for it. They win the 